So what can it actually cost you? Um, you know, what, what's your bottom line going to look like if, if one of these claims were to hit you? So for constructive dismissal, it's up to a year's salary plus the equivalent of a redundancy payment. That's called a basic award. So um, for somebody who's been with you several years, that could be quite a significant payment. For discrimination, uh, the claims are actually uncapped. So it comes down to um, how serious that a judge thinks that a discrimination has been and how, and how poor the behaviour has been um, and the impact that that has had on the employee. Um, so often you see in the newspaper when you read about large employment claims where people are, are claiming significant figures, you'll often find that either there's a pension claim in there or it's a discrimination claim. On top of that, you've also then got to consider legal costs. Now, the average defence cost, this is what you'll pay a solicitor to defend your business, um, is around £10,000 plus VAT. However, your worst case scenario could be well over £100,000. I've actually defended a very large company um, over the last four to five years. The litigation is still ongoing. It's been going since 2016. Um, it is a discrimination claim and the legal costs are over £100,000 for that claim because of the number of claims and the number of allegations that are being brought against that employer. So it doesn't need to cost you a fortune. There's small steps that you can take for a better workplace to support somebody with their mental health. A good first stop is um, anonymous surveys with employees. Um, so really engaging them on the issue and getting buy-in from them to find out what's needed. Um, and often what comes out of that is that you can get project champions, so people who really want to run with um, any any projects or any ideas um, and particularly if you can get buy-in from employees and you can get something run by somebody within the staff you tend to get better engagement from staff members as well that doesn't need to be a complicated process but finding out what it is that employees think they need at work what they believe might be lacking and particularly if it's confidential you're more likely to get honest responses from employees with with a survey such as that in terms of some quick fixes and what we've seen with um, certainly with clients of ours is employees saying that there's nowhere to get quiet space at work, that at work they feel like they're on a treadmill. There's no break up to the day, even though they've got a lunch hour, the phone's constantly going, there's people constantly asking them questions. Um, they're always needed to deal with something and there's no break from that. And it's certainly something, particularly in my job, it's a very demanding job. Um, you do feel that there's no sort of quiet headspace often and, and you feel that, that you, you do actually just need a bit of quiet time. So putting aside, if you've got the room, um, the ability for a bit of quiet space, either for somebody to go and work quietly or to go and take a coffee break on their own and just enjoy a bit of peace and quiet away from the phone ringing and emails, emails binging during the day. Have a look to see if you can put a peer support structure in place. Um, now, the, the, the instant um, sort of suggestion that people think of when they think of peer support is um, assigning line managers or senior managers, and they wonder why the uptake isn't particularly great, and they say, well, no one's called on them, no one's asked for help. Now, what you often find, subject to your, your company's um, ethos and structure and perhaps how people communicate is sometimes people don't want to talk to senior managers they don't necessarily want to talk to a line manager and if it is a case of peer support and just wanting to talk to somebody often somebody on their own level or even lower down in the business can can be a more appropriate peer supporter um, so again having a look at whether that structure would work for you and how, how best that would work for your business Mental health first aid is, is another one, um, you know, there's some great initiatives out there in terms of providing either external mental health first aiders or training up people within your own businesses as well. So not only does that show that you're taking mental health seriously within the workplace, um, but if there are any sort of serious issues that have gone unnoticed or there's underlying issues, um, you know, having those sorts of steps in place can really help bring this to the forefront and it can help more open conversations as well within your workforce. Because mental health is often is you know a hidden disability and it's often thing pe people don't really like to talk about. What you want to try and progress towards is a workplace where people do feel that they can be open, that they can disclose these things without feeling judged, and that they feel that they'll be supported whilst they're at work. And that's something that many companies have a real challenge with. <laughs> 